Welcome back to Family Gamer TV. Now today I want to talk about a game that's slightly different. Um, usually we're often looking at games that families can play in their home. But here's a game that you really need to play outside, maybe with other people, maybe in the park. It's a game called Johann Sebastian Joust. It's slightly complicated to explain, so let me sort of try and show you um, how to play it. First of all, you can maybe have spotted here um, on the shelf that we've got a whole bunch of move controllers. Now this is the, the way the game is played. Each player gets one of these. We have seven move controllers. Um, you get one of these, the end lights up, as you can see, um, and then all you're told is you have to keep your move controllers still, but you're allowed to move other players' controllers by any means possible. Now there's no screen for the game, so you know if you're in by the fact that your light is still lit up on your controller. If you move it too much, you get a warning. If you move it again, um, or someone else moves it for you, if they're trying to get you out, um, your light goes out and a big a sound plays um, on the music. Now that music um, changes speed, and this is the critical thing to Johann Sebastian Joust. If the music's going fast, you can move your controller quite fast, um, and the tolerance is quite, is quite high, so you won't go out. If the music slows down though, as it does as you're playing, you have to move very slowly. And then particular occasions, the game will say freeze, um, and you have to keep your controller absolutely still. Now this sounds like quite um, quite an interesting game, but it's not until I think you see people playing it together that you start to understand quite quite how sort of intriguing and engaging it is. Now I took this game, as you can see here on the video, to the Greenbelt Arts Festival. Uh, setting up, I was slightly worried, how are we gonna get people to play this? We had a sort of village green space, um, where we had the controllers out, had the game set up, and all it took was one round of playing jazz together to really draw a crowd. And in fact, um, over the course of the festival, we reckon we got through about 500 people playing the game and had to turn away hundreds more because the queues were just so long. Now, some interesting tactics evolve as you play it that I quite liked. Some people would um, take the move controller and would try and hide it. So we played it at dusk, so it was slowly getting dark and it became more and more obvious where the players were. But some people would hide it under their clothes, maybe stand at the edge of the arena, try and blend in with the crowd and not be noticed. Some people would be much more direct um, and try and get in and get the other players out almost immediately. There were a bunch of younger players who had obviously looked at the game while they were queuing and had decided to loosen their shoes and try to kick their shoes um, at each other's controllers um, to get them out. That didn't really um, work, but I quite liked the theory there. But probably the best way um, to win the game was just to listen to the music when it moves fast, get in near somebody, wait for it to slow down and then strike when that sensitivity's gone up. to see how popular it was but also to see what it was what it was like watching the games so i think what people thought they were going to be doing was playing an electronic game of tag but because of the way it links to the music because of the way they have to move in time with the music because of the way it's very physical they end up players end up touching and pushing each other um, in all sorts of ways it almost became like a little dance and you'd watch the players sort of at, at maneuvering each other moving around as if they're in some sort of strange peculiar ballet I think that's what really attracted other people to come and play to experience it for themselves so there you go Johann Sebastian Jaws it'll be out I think towards the end of this year in the sports friends collection on PlayStation I imagine it'll be coming to other platforms too um, but I think it's a great way um, that video games are sort of developing with some of these indie games that really stretch what we think a game is or a game isn't um, and take us into sort of interactions and experiences that we wouldn't expect um, from a video game. So there you go, that's what we've got time for on Family Gamer TV today. We'll be back with more soon.